Well, stop me if you've heard this before. A coordinator who wins a national football championship, then later is a head football coach at another school and takes that school to unbelievable heights, and then later is hired as the head coach of the University of Texas. Now, if you were to say, oh, yeah, Tom Herman, man, wouldn't argue with you because you'd be right. But also, too, if you said Charlie Strong, you'd be right as well. And I know that Charlie Strong and Tom Herman don't have identical resumes entering the job at the University of Texas, but they are similar resumes. I mean, let's look at it. Charlie Strong, coordinator at Florida, defensive coordinator. They won a national championship nine years ago. And then at Louisville, we know what a terrific job Charlie Strong did, especially defensively with that Cardinals program. And then three years ago, hired as UT's head coach. But it was not a great experiment. In fact, three seasons for Charlie Strong at Texas, all three losing seasons, 16 wins, 21 losses. One of those losses last year, probably the most unforgivable one, losing to Kansas, just to pour salt on the wound. And Strong was out of there. He's now at South Florida. Tom Herman, well, Ohio State offensive coordinator. Just a few years ago, won a national championship in 2014. Last two years at Houston, combining a 22-win, four-loss resume in his two years at UH. And also, too, by the way, never lost to a ranked opponent. So Texas hired him up just recently, and he will try to do what Charlie Strong could not do, and that is establish chemistry with his Texas program and a winning mentality. And, you know, what was really shocking to me about Charlie Strong, in my opinion, was that defense is what he specialized in, and Texas just wasn't very good at defense, especially this last year. And they were very vulnerable against the run. They were very vulnerable against the pass. Just could not get the job done, him or Vance Bedford. But now their history for UT and Tom Herman again, bringing in Tim Beck as offensive coordinator from Ohio State and bringing alongside um, Todd Orlando from Houston. Well, we'll see if Texas can contend once again for Big 12 championships, which they haven't really done except for one time in 2013. Then prior to that, you got to go back to the Vince Young and Colt McCoy days. But let's begin offensively where UT, let's face it, you know, they did a decent job. They were balanced a year ago. Um, biggest reason why was because of the terrific start of one Shane Bouchel. True freshman got thrown into the fire immediately, and I thought held his own. Threw for nearly 3,000 yards in 2016, 21 touchdown passes, got to a solid start. Remember that win over Notre Dame? Toward the end of the year, wasn't quite as efficient, and for the year, threw 11 interceptions. So if you're a UT fan, you are hopeful that Tim Beck can correct that somewhat. Now, I do think Beck... I think this offense will throw a little bit more than what we saw last year because he's got a slew of receivers to select from. I think the most popular combination for Texas this year will be Bouchelle to Colin Johnson. Last year as a freshman, we saw glimpses of what he's made of. 28 catches, over 300 yards receiving, three scores, stands 6 feet 6 inches tall. Other receivers that can make an impact, talking about uh, Devin uh, Duvernay, who last year as a freshman also had three scores and three touchdowns, is what uh, the senior in Armonte Foreman had as well and had over 400 yards in receiving yardage. John Burt, he's been around. He has started a total of 17 games a junior. And rounding out the wideouts that I think will make an impact for Texas in 2017 will be Gerard Hurd, who can play QB, running back, but wide receiver will be his main trait. Uh, played every game last year except for one and had two starts. Running game is the big mystery for Texas because a year ago they were so dominant in this area. How dominant? Deontay Foreman did something that's rare in college football. He had over 2,000 yards rushing in one season. In fact, he was only one of two backs last year to pull that off. And obviously that's a major void entering the 2017 season. Can Chris Warren get the job? You know, can he get the job done? He can if he stays healthy, but that's a $64,000 question because last year he only played four games, had the knee injury, but the injuries didn't stop there. This last spring had some hamstring issues, and then in August practice just recently sustained a concussion. So, my gosh, what's this guy's heart? You know, Chris Warren, effective when healthy, but will he be healthy, especially for the entire season? We just don't know. And then uh, backing him up, Kyle Porter, who I think we'll see quite a few touches 205 yards is what he gained last year, 4.5 per carry, but again, action limited because of Warren at the beginning and Foreman throughout the season. Offensive line, I think the majority of it will be solid, at least proven solid. Offensive tackle, Connor Williams, you can say him or Orlando Brown of Oklahoma is the best left tackle 
you know, you can make an argument for either guy and probably convince the average person. Connor Williams, now a junior, 23 career starts, and I think he's going to the NFL after this year because terrific left tackles are very hard to come by, and they do covet a lot of money on the next level. Center, Zach Shackelford, last year as, as a freshman, started and played in nine games at left guard. Guy who's got credentials as well, and Patrick Fahe, who played all 12 games last year for the Horns and started in nine contests. Right side of the offensive line, got to be a little concerned because Brandon Hodges will not be back for his final year at UT. He's decided to transfer. So now you have Denzel Okafor, who will occupy that position. Last year as a freshman, did not start, but played in 10 games. And right guard, you have Jake McMillan, whom last year as a sophomore, played in 10 games, started in five, now entering his junior year. And rounding out the Texas offensive line, the tight end, he's a veteran, Andrew Beck, who's had 16 career starts and started last year in three games. Texas a year ago, on one hand, they did average 32 points per contest, and they were a balanced offense. So what can they do better? Well, pass protection, they did give up 30 sacks. But I think the biggest concern for Texas offensively, they got to keep the chains moving. And last year, they did not do a good job in that. 36% on third down conversions, one of the worst percentages in college football. So there's an area of opportunity. Is the Texas defense in need of revival? Oh, yeah, no question about it. I mean, a year ago, you know, they allowed a team to rush for over 200 yards in the game five times. That's right, five times. And the past D, not even ranked in the top 100 in the country. So there were problems throughout. But one good thing that they did do in 2016, they got to the quarterback a lot. 41 sacks, and that's something that Todd Orlando, the new defensive coordinator, who coached under Tom Herman at Houston, can build upon. And in case you're wondering, you know, Houston – uh, last year was 12th in the country in total D. So you know Tom Orlando can get the job done, and he's got a lot of experience to work with with nearly everybody back on the UT defensive side. Malcolm Roach is one of them, a uh, defensive end who, as a freshman, did a nice job, played in every game last year, started in five and had 33 tackles. Puna Ford, a senior, is back, and he's one of the few seniors on this entire team on either side of the ball that's a starter, defensive tackle Puna Ford has had a total of 17 career starts. And nose tackle Chris Nelson entering his junior year in 2016, he had 45 tackles, 24 of them solo. The linebackers, they all return. Brecken Hager, a junior last season, named second team all Big 12 as a defensive end. The outside linebacker, I think, is where he'll specialize this year. Second team all Big 12 is also the title of Malik Jefferson, who's been a starter since year number one, a terrific all-around linebacker. And don't be surprised, too, if, uh, once again, you see the defensive coordinator just let Jefferson loose and try to get into the backfield, and he's added a little bit more muscle as well. And you have Anthony Wheeler at the middle linebacking spot, 65 stops a year ago, leading all Texas players in tackles. So you have him back. Secondary does lose Dylan Haynes, a safety, but you have everybody else back. The corners, we'll see if they can get better. And Chris Boyd, a junior who started the last eight games of the season, had 51 stops. The other corner, you have Devontae Davis, a junior, started in four games. And at strong safety, the Sean Elliott, a junior, with 30 tackles, one interception. Highlighting the Texas schedule, if the Longhorns cannot get off to a 2-0 start, they're going to be early rumblings in Austin, and they won't be good for Tom Herman. So 2-0 start, though, I do think will happen. I think they'll handle Maryland. And I think they'll definitely handle San Jose State. But the next game's a different story. One of the best teams in the country, the men of Troy. And the Longhorns have to travel to the West Coast to face them. First time these two teams have played each other since Texas won the national championship a dozen seasons ago. But notice the October schedule. That's not going to be fun because back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, you probably play the three best teams in the league, K-State, the Sooners, and the Cowboys, but there is good news. You get two of them at Darrell K. Rural Stadium. And, of course, the Sooners, led by first-year coach Lincoln Riley. The Red River matchup is always at the Texas State Fair during that second weekend of October. Later on in the schedule, you'll notice matchups against Baylor, TCU, back-to-back -back road games. And then West Virginia on the road. That's an either-or game. And the Red Raiders the day after Turkey Day at home on November the 24th. Vegas has Texas at 7.5 wins. I'm going to go seven wins, which is a two-game improvement from a year ago. This is not to say that Tom Herman is going to have the same kind of coaching career as Charlie Strong, but it's got to be proven, and it's going to have to take some time. 
If Tom Herman does what I think Texas will do, they will be contending for Big 12 championships. But I don't think it happens in year number one of the Herman era. That's my look at Texas. See you next time.